Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how you can get your crypto wallet holdings in Kraken and also how you can integrate a backend of Supabase to hold data. In our case, we're going to be holding a lookup table. And to review the app technologies, we're going to be using Supabase as our database. We're going to be looking at our Kraken holdings, so that's where our actual money in our wallet is. And then we are going to deploy and have the interface through Streamlit, which is a web application in Python. So to review today, I'm going to be focusing primarily on the app development of a couple things. One is the actual querying of the Kraken holdings through the API. The second is making sure that data is organized so that we can visualize it with charts or whatever we want. And the third is to have the Supabase uh, integration set up so that basically we're using a lookup in Supabase rather than a static CSV. And to deploy this application to the internet so that other people can use it and see it, we're going to be using GitHub for storing our code and we're going to be using Streamlit Cloud to deploy our application. To deploy this application, I have it on a couple other videos, but essentially you're going to want to go to streamlit.io slash cloud. You're going to want to authorize your GitHub. And then the third thing is to make a new app from an existing directory. So one thing we're going to have to do is set up a API key for Kraken. To do this, go to this URL specified and then click create API key and then you'll have API keys. Let me show you how to actually do that in the portal. So when you log into Kraken, you'll be able to go over to settings. When you click settings, you'll want to navigate to this API tab. And then right here, you'll see the create API key. So to get started, go navigate to the GitHub repo that I have in the description below. Then go over to code, HTTPS, and then copy the location. Go over to VS Code, run git clone, and then give it that git location. And now we'll have a repository on our local machine in the Kraken portfolio directory. Okay, so now let's open up that directory, so file open and look for Kraken Portfolio, select folder, and this will open up in our VS Code session. And now we can take a look at what files we have in here. So we have app.py, which is where our Streamlit app will live. We have a CSV, which we won't need anymore because uh, we will be using Supabase to hold CS the CSV. Um, but it is here just so you have reference to see what the data actually looks like of the lookup. We have a readme, which is all the documentation. And then we have requirements.txt, which are just the requirements for this project. Okay, so now let's start to go over the code. And I will be skipping over certain sections as they're not as important. Uh, so the big one is you need requests in your uh, package imports. We need that for the Kraken API. As Kraken doesn't have a Python package, you'll actually have to use just straight up um, requests, which actually kind of makes it a little simpler. And their documentation on their developer um, experience with Python is very good in Kraken. So if we just kind of go through here, um, we also have Supabase. So I set up my Supabase URL in Supabase key. Those are kept in environmental uh, variables and you don't want to really share those around or put them in your github. The next thing we're going to do is create Superbase client. Then we start making the app with just the page configuration. Then I am reading in the readme of this uh, repo as the basically documentation for the web app. So I've been starting to do that more is actually just read in my readme document so that it's in the repo and it also is exposed in your uh, application as well so that people actually know how you made it. So after that, that's where I'm gonna inject my API key for Kraken and my secret and also set up the Kraken 
uh, URL for the API, then this is just straight from the Kraken uh, documentation. So these are two functions that will basically validate uh, that you are who you say you are with your API keys. And yep, those are pretty straightforward. They're just from the documentation. And we go through, we make the app, so we make the title, we're writing some stuff. That's for README, we can skip through that. This is the part that we're interested in is actually calling the Kraken request and we're gonna have a response come back and you'll see that it's gonna be my private balances. So those are balances just exposed to me. And after that, we basically can get a data object that's JSON and we subset that so that we get the results from the query. This is the part that integrates Supabase. So for Supabase, I have this Kraken lookup CSV. And if you don't have a Supabase integration, what you can do is just uncomment my line here where I'm just reading in that CSV and you could update that CSV with whatever values are appropriate for you. And after that, I just do a basically a merge of these two and make sure that all the coins are assigned to either a stable coin or a fiat currency or an altcoin. So it'll just be a little pie chart, which I'll show in the actual web application. And after that, yep, I have labels and values. And then I, that's where I make the pie chart and I'm using Plotly for my charting. Yep, and then, yeah, I just basically have the breakdown of that. I show the Plotly chart as fig, and the rest of this is just for kind of like UI purposes. So I do show the back end of Supabase, and I'll show you the, uh, basically just the CSV that I am, uh, I have in the repo here, but in this case, I'm actually gonna just show the Supabase output. And I also have an author page, so that's just me iframing my GitHub README, which is a nice touch so people know who you are when you build a web application. And the last one is actually an iframe to donate Bitcoin. Okay, now that we have the app code reviewed, let's actually create a new app from an existing GitHub repo. Paste in your GitHub location there. You might have to update some things, including the branch along with the file name. And then the other big part is you're gonna want to go to advanced settings and you basically wanna update with all the environmental variables that we have specified in here. So these are things that you don't want exposed in your code, such as your API key. So it's just gonna be the variable name with an equal sign and then give it the value that you want it. So you would basically set all these up. I'm not gonna expose my keys in the demo, but you would also want to do this for Supabase. So, and I think the last one is called key. And you would save and then go back to the main section and I would have the deploy option there. And I'll show you how this actually looks in and up in the web application. And now that we've deployed, here's our application. So we'll start with, this is just the readme documentation of how this was made. The second part is the part that we're focused on, which is actually showing our Kraken holdings. So you'll see here, that 61% of my holdings, or about 62%, are actually in stable, and then the rest I have in altcoins. Then the next section just shows the lookup. So if you were using the local CSV, this should look familiar. And essentially, this is just the lookup I'm keeping in Supabase. So this is an example of how to basically host your tables in Supabase. Then we have my README for my documentation as a developer. So you'll see this is just a nice thing to add to your you know, developer portfolio because it kind of shows 
uh, just your skill set. You can see I do a lot of Python work, JavaScript. Once again, these are more for UI elements and just fluff. And the last one is actually an iframe of a Bitcoin wallet that you can send me Bitcoin to if you felt like you wanted to donate to this project. But that's it. We basically have a web app that grabs data from the Kraken API of our balances and we can look at various breakdowns that we want on how our portfolio holdings are in Kraken. Thanks.